want to go to the magic garden today. Will you come with me? What for? Well, Digby the gardener has lost his dog and Can so we I... pick some flowers? Morris, we've got to find Digby's dog, Spot. What's Digby's dog, Spot? Don't be so dim, Morris. Digby has a dog. His name is Spot. He's lost. Oh, Spot! Why didn't you say so? Yes, let's go and look for him. And while we're looking, we can sing our riddle. Our riddle! Ready when you are. Here we go round the garden, singing our very own song. When the sun comes out, we dance and shout with a rat-a-tat-tat and a bing-bang-bong. We've got a riddle, it's short and sweet, who's got a blue coat and four big feet, who won't ever fight and who won't ever bite, and who says you what quite a lot? Yes, Spot. Spot, where are you? Where are you, Spot? Naughty dog. He is naughty, isn't he? Here we go round the garden, singing our very own song. When the sun comes out, we dance and shout with a rat-a-tat-tat and a bing-bang-bong. Look, it's Spot. Hello, Spot. Have you been hiding from us? You are. Oh, no, no. I've been hiding from Digby. He won't let me have any fun in the garden. Fun? What you mean is Digby won't let you dig up his plants. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't always know when I dig up his plants. What do you mean? Well, I'll tell you. This story's all about me. And I've called it Spot Finds a Friend. One spring day, I was with Digby in the magic garden. Now, Spot, said Digby, be good while I plant these seedlings. You what? I said. Seedlings. They're seeds that are beginning to grow into plants, said Digby. If you don't dig them up, you can have some of your favourite dog biscuits as a treat. My mouth watered. But remember, said Digby, you must be good, because I've hidden the biscuits where only I can find them. Digby got busy planting his seedlings, and I got busy being good. But it was such a lovely, springy sort of day that I felt I would burst if I didn't do something. So I jumped up in the air a few times and barked. Then I made some runs at a bush. With my last run, I landed right in the middle of the bush. Hey, careful, Spot, called Digby. Keep away from my seedlings. I barked and barked and threw earth all over the place. I thought I might find something exciting if I tried hard enough. Eek! Ouch! said a cross little voice. I stopped in surprise. Then I lifted a paw and parted the leaves. There sat a small, bright-eyed mouse with long whiskers. Oh dear, I'm sorry, I said. I didn't know there was someone in there. Who are you? <coughs> I'm Margot, said the mouse. You were carrying on in a very strange way. I felt a bit silly. I was just having a game. I was bored, you see. Margot stopped looking cross. I know just what you mean, she said. I've been asleep for ages because I was bored too. I was just going to look for some breakfast when you jumped on me. By the way, who are you? You what? I'm Spot. And I know that somewhere in this garden are hidden the most delicious biscuits. Let's look for them together. You're a very nice dog, Spot, even though you are a bit bouncy, said Margot. Do you know where these biscuits might be? I looked round for Digby. He'd gone to work in another part of the garden and his back was turned. I think, I said to Margot, that they're buried among Digby's seedlings because that's just where he told me not to dig. Well then, said Margot, why don't you dig the biscuits up now and I'll plant the seedlings after you. So I dug up all the seedlings and Margot put them back in the soil with her dainty little paws. She did it so neatly that you'd never have known we'd touched them. 
but there were no biscuits to be found. You what? I said. No biscuits? Just then, Digby came back. He looked at me, then he looked at Margot. Well, Spot, he said. You found a friend to keep you out of mischief, eh? You what? Oh, yeah. Digby, this is Margot. How do you do? said Margot. Pleased to meet you, said Digby. Spot, I can see you haven't touched my seedlings, so here's your treat. You can share it with Margot. Digby took out a box of my favourite biscuits from his bag of garden tools. Margot and I winked at each other, and as we munched the biscuits, we couldn't help looking at each other and laughing. <laughs> Poor Digby just could not understand why. You're a very naughty dog, Spot. You are? Oh, I can be much naughtier than that. <laughs> Spot, <laughs> don't you dare chase those birds. No, why not? Because they're very pretty and they make a lovely noise and I like them. Now, just you be nice to those birds. Oh, hello, Tweety Birds. That's better. Now, let's sit down and listen to Nigel's poem about the birds. Two Little Dicky Birds Two little dicky birds sitting on a wall. One named Peter, one named Paul. Fly away, Peter, fly away, Paul. Come back, Peter, come back, Paul. Look, Spot, you can wiggle your paws to make dicky birds. Oh, yeah. Yes, people can wiggle their fingers. Will you say the poem again, Nigel? Two little dicky birds sitting on a wall. One named Peter, one named Paul. Fly away, Peter. Fly away, Paul. Come back, Peter. Come back, Paul. Oh, look, it's raining. Come on, Doris. Come on, Spot. Let's all go inside and say hello to Carol. Oh, yes. I bet she'll tell us a story if we ask nicely. Hello, you two. Hello, Spot. <laughs> Hello, Carol. It's pouring with rain outside. Can we come in and listen to a story? Of course you can. This one's called The Toys Tea Party. Teddy the bear and Rita the rag doll looked out of the playroom window. It was raining and there were pretty patterns running down the glass of the window. Outside in the garden, the goldfish pond had overflowed and there was water everywhere. The garden table and the garden chairs were soaking wet. Oh no, said Rita. We won't be able to have our garden party now. Of course we will, said Teddy. It's only a shower. The rain will stop soon. One o'clock passed, then two o'clock, and still it rained. I told you it wouldn't stop in time for the party, said Rita, and I've made lots of sandwiches and buns too. I know, said Teddy. We can have the party indoors. But where, asked Rita. Right here in the playroom. That's a great idea, smiled Rita. But we'd better hurry. Our guests will be here soon. So Teddy and Rita set to work. They put all the building blocks together to make tables and then they laid out the sandwiches, buns and some lemonade. Just as they had finished, the doorbell rang. Rita and Teddy rushed downstairs. Opening the door, they found all their friends sheltering under a large umbrella. There stood Billy the ball, Holly the hoop and Jack in the box. <laughs> come in, come in, cried Teddy. You must be soaking. 
As the toys came inside, Rita took their wet coats and hats. Then Teddy and Rita took their guests upstairs to the playroom. I think we need a few games to warm us up, said Rita. Oh, yes, said Billy the Bull. So they all played hide-and-seek, blind man's buff and paper chase. <laughs> What a super party, said Jack in the Box. This is the best garden party I've ever been to, even though it is indoors. <laughs> the toys had been so busy laughing and enjoying themselves, no one had noticed it had stopped raining. Out in the garden, the sun was drying up the grass. Soon the garden table and the garden chairs were dry too. Teddy saw the sun first, then Rita, then Billy the Ball, Holly the Hoop and Jack in the Box. Look, the sun's shining! Come on, everybody, shouted Teddy. Let's have a real garden party. So the toys took the sandwiches and buns and lemonade and ran outside. It was beautiful in the garden and a big bright rainbow filled the sky. The friends sat down to have their tea. sun shone and shone as they ate. Teddy mopped his forehead with a handkerchief. I know. Let's use the umbrella as a sunshade, said Jack in the Box. It'll keep us cool and the lemonade too. <laughs> yeah, cried Holly, and Jack in the Box hopped off to get the umbrella. <laughs> the toys set it up over the tea table and then they all sat down by the goldfish pond to enjoy the rest of their tea. Now it's not just a garden party we're having, said Rita the rag doll. It's like a picnic by the sea as well. Doris, the sun's come out in our garden too. Hooray! Let's go round and round the garden. Like the teddy bear. <gasps> Wait a moment. That reminds me of something. What? The tickling song. What tickling song? Round and round the garden. Let's sing it. Oh, yeah. the garden like a teddy bear one step two step tickle you under there <laughs> round and round the garden like a teddy bear one step two step tickle you under there <laughs> i'm going to tickle you morris oh, no don't doris you're making me laugh <laughs> <laughs> come on let's do it again yes, let's Round and round the garden like a teddy bear. One step, two step, tickle you under there. Round and round the garden like a teddy bear. One step, two step, tickle you under there. Doris, where are you? Here I am. Oh. I've been walking in the magic garden. It's so beautiful. I've got one of my singing moods coming on. Oh, no. Now, don't be like that, Morris. This is a question and answer song. You can ask the question if you like. All right. What is the question? I'll whisper it to you. I think I've learnt it. Shall we start? Ready when you are. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? 
with silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. With silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. Silver bells and cockle shells? I'd soon dig that lot up. No, you wouldn't, Spot. No. You'd be a good dog if I asked you nicely, wouldn't you? You what? Wouldn't you? Well, if you ask me very nicely. All right, Spot. Dear, kind, good Spot, please, 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 will you sit down with me and listen to Nigel's story? <sighs> Spot? Oh, all right, I'll be good. What's the story? It's Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> There was once a woman who had a son called Jack. Jack and his mother were so poor that one day they had to sell their only cow. On the way to market to sell the cow, Jack met a little old man. That's a fine cow you have there, said the little old man. I'll buy her from you for these five magic beans. Magic beans, said Jack. That must be better than money. So Jack took the five magic beans and ran home. When he told his mother what he'd done, she was furious with him. What? she cried. You sold our cow for five beans? Off to bed with you and no supper. And she threw the beans out of the window. Next morning, Jack could hardly believe his eyes. Outside the window were the leaves of a huge plant. Jack looked up and saw a beanstalk reaching right up into the clouds. So, the beans were magic, thought Jack. He started to climb the huge beanstalk. He climbed and he climbed up through the clouds until at last he reached the top. In the distance, Jack saw a castle. He walked and he walked right up to the castle door and knocked. The door was opened by the biggest woman Jack had ever seen. He looked up at her. Please, he said, could you spare me something to eat? I'm so hungry. Be off, said the woman. My husband will be back soon and he doesn't like little boys. But Jack pleaded and pleaded so the woman let him in and gave him some bread and cheese. While he was eating, the castle walls began to shake and Jack heard the thud, thud of giant footsteps in the passage. It's my husband, cried the woman. Quick, hide in the oven. She had just closed the oven door on Jack when an enormous giant burst into the kitchen. Free fi fo fum he roared. I smell a little boy in this room. Nonsense, dear, nonsense, said his wife. Sit down and eat your dinner. The giant sat down and ate plateful after plateful of his huge dinner. When he'd finished, he said, Bring me my magic hen. It's time she laid some eggs. Jack opened the oven door a crack and peeped out. The giant's wife brought in a little brown hen and put her on the table. Lay, hen, lay, said the giant. At once, the hen laid one, two, three golden eggs. Jack could not believe his eyes. The giant chuckled with pleasure. Then, with a growl, he laid his head on the table and fell fast asleep. So, too, did the giant's wife. Jack crept out of the oven, picked up the hen and ran out of the castle, across the clouds and back to the beanstalk. He climbed down the beanstalk 
and ran into his house. His mother was overjoyed to see him. Now we shall never be poor again, said Jack, stroking the hen. He told his mother all about the beanstalk and the giant and the golden eggs. <coughs> But as time went by, Jack began to long for another adventure. So, one morning, when his mother was still asleep, he climbed up the beanstalk again. This time, he slipped into the castle while the giant's wife was in the garden. So, she did not see him. Jack went into the kitchen and hid in the washtub. Soon the castle walls shook and Jack heard the thud, thud of giant footsteps in the passage. The giant came into the kitchen. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell a little boy in this room. Nonsense, dear, nonsense, said his wife, following him in. Sit down and eat your dinner. The giant ate plateful after plateful uh, of his huge dinner, and when he'd finished, he said, Bring me my magic harp. I want to hear music. The giant's wife brought in a beautiful little golden harp and put it on the table. Play, harp, play, said the giant. At once, the harp played a gentle lullaby. Soon, the giant was fast asleep. So too was the giant's wife. Jack jumped out of the washtub, picked up the harp, and ran out of the castle. But as he ran, the harp called out, Master! Master! With an angry roar, the giant woke up. Seizing his axe, he chased after Jack. Jack raced over the clouds in terror, clutching the harp to his chest. He threw himself at the beanstalk and slithered down its stem. The giant crashed after him. Fetch my axe, cried Jack to his mother as he reached the ground. His mother rushed out with the axe and, as the giant's feet appeared through the clouds, Jack chopped and chopped at the stem of the beanstalk. The beanstalk began to sway, and then it snapped in two. With a crash, it fell to the ground, bringing the giant with it. The giant hit the ground with such a thump that the earth shook, and he lay there as still as a stone. Now, Jack and his mother had no more worries. With the hen that laid golden eggs and the harp that played sweet music, they lived happily for the rest of their days. Spot, what have you got in your mouth? <coughs> what? Oh, a flower pot. A flower pot? Oh, goody. There are lots of things you can make with them. Such as? Well, it's all in Carol and Stephen's rhyme. Flower pot games. Look in the garden or under the stair. Find all the flower pots father can spare. Mix sand and water. It's easy and fun. And you'll get a sandcastle out of each one. Pick out a small pot to wear as a hat. But don't get your head stuck. You wouldn't like that. Two little flower pots held up together make lovely binoculars. Look at the weather. Put one on another until you've got plenty. You'll soon make a tower with 15 or 20. Push your tower to the ground and make it all wiggly. Look, there's a snake. It's all shiny and wriggly. Pile compost and earth into each of your pots. Let seeds grow to flowers, like grown-ups from tots. Look, Doris, 
Look at this tower I've made out of flower pots. Don't put any more on, Morris. It'll fall over. No, it won't. Just one more, please. That tower will fall over. It won't. Uh, there. What a super tower. I told you it would fall over. Oh, dear. Never mind, Morris. Let's listen to Stephen's story, and then I'll help you put the flower pots away. Thanks, Doris. <laughs> The Garden Under the Sea Rachel sat on the beach in tears. She was feeling lonely by the sea, but even worse, she had lost her garden. Rachel's parents had brought her to live in another country where her dad had found work. The family had left their house in England and now lived in part of a tall building. Mum said it was a flat. It was nice, but the flat had no garden. If only we could have brought our garden with us, thought Rachel. She remembered how lovely it was. It had a pond, too, with beautiful lilies floating on the water. Suddenly, something bobbed above the waves. As Rachel stared, she saw it was a mermaid with a shiny fish tail. I heard you crying, said the mermaid. My name is Iona. Can I help? Rachel explained all about the garden she had left behind. Why, I know a garden you can visit, smiled the mermaid. She blew gently, and a huge bubble came out of the sea. Step inside, said the mermaid, and I will guide you. The bubble carried Rachel down, down beneath the blue-green water. Soon, they reached the most beautiful place Rachel had ever seen. The seabed was covered in soft golden sand, and a path of shiny white shells twisted across it. This is my garden, said the mermaid. On either side of the shell path, strange seaweed grew like silken flowers. Rachel had never seen so many shapes and colors, even in the garden at home. Iona pointed to a big pink and orange shape. It's called coral, explained Iona. See, it makes a lovely garden seat. Rachel sat on the coral seat and fish swam playfully around her. Some were striped, others spotted. Every fish seemed different. At last, Iona led Rachel back to the beach. The bubble burst, leaving Rachel standing on the seashore again. She was perfectly dry. The mermaid gave her a pink and white shell. Whenever you want to visit my garden, she said, blow on this and I will come to fetch you. The mermaid vanished before Rachel could thank her. Clasping the shell, Rachel ran all the way home. Where did you get that unusual shell? asked Rachel's mum. From a lovely garden, said Rachel. A garden under the sea. A garden under the sea. Cool. Do you think I could make one in the magic garden fish pond? I don't think you should do that, Morris. You might frighten the fish. <coughs> As if Spot didn't do that already. Hey, Spot, are you all right? You don't look very happy. No, oh, I'm very happy. Extremely happy. In fact, I'm so happy that I'm going to sing you my song. Hooray! <laughs> What? You what? It's a dog's life being a dog called Spot. People shout at me and say, Naughty dog to disobey. Go away, you're just a stray called Spot. You what? You what? Do I like it? Do I like it? Not a lot. Put the magic gardens home and I'll stay here like a gnome and I'll never, never roam cos I'm Spot. Yes, I'm Spot. 
That was very good, oh. Spot. Well done, Spot. Yes. Yeah. Now you can say goodbye to everybody. Uh, uh, bye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Yeah, bye, bye everybody. Bye. See you soon. <laughs> yeah. Bye. -bye. bye.